Hey guys, I got a surprising amount of really supportive response from my last video, um, so I wasn't planning on actually making more videos about this kind of thing, but just given all the positive feedback I've been getting about so many people saying that they've been looking for resources and representation for non-binary people, um, I figure I might as well keep doing these video things. So um, I'm going to be addressing different subjects or different subtopics about um, non-binary gender transition, things related to that. Today's topic is going to be HRT, specifically non-binary HRT, because a lot of people think, a lot of people are very confused about the whole non-binary transition thing, like, do you transition or not, or whatever. I personally am transitioning, which is why I'm making this video, because people asked me to talk about my experience on testosterone. So, starting out, how does one decide that one actually wants testosterone? Now, it's important to understand that when making the decision to go or not to go on hormone replacement therapy, that there is a lot of consequences, both good and bad, not all of which will be reversible. There's really no identity specifier for who gets testosterone and who doesn't get testosterone. It's really just distinguishing the presence of gender dysphoria. So it's kind of like a pros versus cons thing. Like, is your dysphoria mainly focused on your chest? Because then you might just be able to get top surgery and not take testosterone. Or are you dysphoric about things like your hips, fat placement, voice, um, things like that. It's important to understand what things testosterone will change and what things testosterone will not change. Testosterone will deepen your voice, it will make your face more masculine, it will reposition your fat somewhat over time, genital growth. I, um, you'll be able to build muscle a lot easier, you might feel more aggressive and or sexually frustrated, and basically all of the things associated with being a 14 year old boy. So you have to consider whether or not you're okay with that. I obviously made the decision that I was. So um, all things to consider, I will now move on to how to get testosterone as an autobinary person. Now it's very important to understand that the WPATH standards of care, I think 7.0, I'll put a link to it here on my face, I guess. Um, in the WPATH standards of care, from 2011 onward, non-binary and genderqueer people are included in that. So that means that there is a standard of treatment for transition of non-binary people, contrary to what any misinformed physician or gender therapist would tell you, because I have been misinformed by many physicians and gender therapists. Um, so, after, so knowing that, um, you would then seek out a physician who is willing to give HRT. I live in Canada. In Canada, you do not need a note from a gender therapist or anything like that for your physician to start you on hormone therapy. You don't even need to see an endocrinologist. Your physician should be able to handle all that if they are trained, trained in trans care. If they're not trained in trans care, you might have to go somewhere else. Self-advocacy is very important because the inclusion of non-binary and gender non-conforming people is a very new development because it's only occurred over the past three years. So there are many physicians who have been working with transgender people for a very long time who are not yet caught up on this. So if anyone tells you that because you're non-binary or genderqueer you can't receive treatment, you can't go on HRT, you can't get surgery, that's not true and you need to direct them to the WPATH standards of CARE 7.0. There's still a lot of stigma in the medical community around gender nonconformity just because it is associated um, with um, mental illness or with being confused about one's gender identity. And so the best way to go about receiving treatment is just to be prepared that you will have to advocate your for yourself and you may have to educate healthcare practitioners and therapists and things like that about your issues. It's really good to prepare yourself with resources 
and online information that is accessible to you via Google. It's also good to know that in the WPATH Standards of Care most recent edition, there is no um, standard wait period for beginning HRT. So if someone tells you that, then again, you need to direct them to the WPATH Standards of Care 7.0. They work on what's called an informed consent model, so basically um, they might send you to a counseling session, like one or two, just to make sure that you know the effects of testosterone, you know the consequences, you're secure in your gender identity, things like that. They just make sure that you're conformed and that you have the ability to knowingly consent. So upon going to my new doctor, who is going to be overseeing my hormone replacement therapy, I attended two sessions with a gender counselor at the same clinic and received my prescription for testosterone within a month. I will again note that seeing a counselor is not required, but due to the fact of being non-binary or gender non-conforming, you there is a possibility that you will be sent to one because there's still a lot of stigma around gender non-conforming people, unfortunately. So I was put on 200 milligrams a month of testosterone via intramuscular injection. Although it is written in the WPATH standards of care that regardless of your gender identity, you still should be able to have access to hormones. Um, there is no specific dose regulations or standards or anything like that of what is an FTM dose versus what is a non-binary dose. So fucking around with your testosterone dose is probably going to be something you have to do um, because most non-binary people who get, who, um, because most non-binary people that I've met who have been on FTM dose testosterone have found it to be too high. Even if I was transitioning FTM, the dose that they put me on was still too high because it was 200 milligrams a month for someone who is five foot three and 110 pounds soaking wet. So... Doctors are not always the most educated on giving specific doses to weight and need. There's pretty much a standard dose of 200 milligrams a month that you can get a little bit more or less, but that's pretty much what they'll give you. So um, you're pretty much just going to have to experiment with what you feel comfortable with. That doesn't mean changing your dose every week or every two weeks or anything like that. It means being on the dose that they subscribed you for a while, seeing how you feel, maybe lessening the dose, maybe increasing the dose, and just um, seeing, like monitoring how your body reacts to this testosterone. Because like I said, originally I was put on 200 milligrams a month. Um, I found that that was way too much for my tiny body. So I originally went from 50 milligram a week injections to 100 milligram every two week injections. And then I went to 50 milligrams every two weeks, and now I'm at 50 milligrams a month. So I was on 200 milligrams a month, and I'm down to 50. And I find that 50 is much closer to a comfortable dose. The average 200 milligrams a month was just way too much, and I felt kind of out of control with the changes that were happening with my body. So then there is stopping T, because most non-binary people who go on testosterone, who are not transitioning FTM, are probably going to want to stop testosterone at some point. Um, speaking from my own ex personal experience, um, I don't really know when I'm planning on stopping testosterone. Um, I'm pretty content staying on it as long as I can, really, um, considering I'm such on such a low dose. And if you are someone who wants to be on testosterone for a longer period of time, I would recommend going at a lower dose. Um, it's not quite as comfortable seeing your body change rapidly over a short period of time versus seeing it change slowly over a long period of time. I'm not quite comfortable with the fast change method. <laughs> and, I mean, if you're ever thinking that you might want to stop testosterone, just stop. You could always take a break. You already had the prescription, so it's always easy to get another one. You can always stop whenever you want. You can always, you know, as a non-binary transitioning person, you are going to kind of have to spearhead your own transition and really um, advocate for yourself. So um, you really just have to feel it out with um, if you feel like stopping, if you feel like starting again, managing your dose. Like it's all very kind of do it yourself, unfortunately. I'm really hoping that that changes over the next few years because I really don't think that it's reasonable to make non-binary people manage their own doses when it comes to things like hormone therapy. But um, Maybe it isn't like that other places, maybe that's just Ontario. Anyway, so that's my experience with testosterone, and I'll probably make some more videos later about other topics to do with gendery stuff. And that's just me, signing off.